Thank you, sir. Shall we start? Yes, yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. Good evening to all. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the fifth keynote lecture of CECON 23. With great honor, I would like to welcome the guest of the day, Dr. Mohammed Najafi, Director, Center of Center for uh, Underground Infrastructure Research and Education and Professor, uh, Department of Civil Engineering, the University of Texas at Arlington, Texas, USA, and Dr. Vinayak Kaushal, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, the University of Texas at Arlington, Texas, USA, who will be delivering the keynote lecture based on environmental impact assessment of trenchless cured in pipe Cured in place pipe renewal method for sanitary sewer applications. I also welcome the audience who have graced the event with their presence. With great pleasure, I would like to give a brief introduction on our speakers. Dr. Uh, Mohammed Najafi has more than 30 years of experience encompassing engineering, educational, research, consulting, and management activities. Prior to starting his academic career, he spent more than 13 years working on various construction projects. He is the author of several books on trenchless technology and asset management. As director of the Center for Underground Infrastructure Research and Education at the University of Texas at Arlington, he has led many funded research projects and also has extensive administrative and management experience in research activities. He is a renowned international expert in pipeline engineering and trenchless technology and has been a frequently invited keynote speaker at national and international conferences. Under his direction, a new Master of Construction Management was instituted at the University of Texas, which has enrolled more than 700 students. Dr. Najafi is an active member of ASE, ASTM, AWWA and NASTT. He has served as the chair of ASE Pipeline Division Executive Committee and was a chair of ASE Pipelines 2013 conference. He is also the chief editor emeritus of ASE Journal of Pipeline Systems Engineering and Practice and also a registered professional engineer in Texas. Welcome you, sir. Dr. Dr. Vinay Kaushal is an assistant professor of instruction of civil engineering at the University of Texas at Arlington. He teaches a variety of uh, undergraduate and graduate courses in construction engineering and management and general civil engineering. He has more than six years of experience working in the field of construction management, research, and teaching. He has authored more than 80 peer-reviewed journal and conference papers and had been actively involved in the industry research projects on sustainable trenchless pipe con pipeline construction and renewal technology and has collaborated in writing several research proposals. He is a member of American Society of Civil Engineers, Trenchless Renewal of Culverts and Storm Sewers Technical Committee and Cured in Place Pipe subcommittee under the American Water Works Association's Pipe Rehabilitation Standard Committee. He is also a member of Early Career Editorial Board for Elsevier's Underground Space Journal and board member of MDPIS Infrastructures and Sustainability Journals for his expertise in sustainable underground infrastructure. Dr. Kaushal has earlier served as a postdoctoral research associate and an adjunct professor at civil department, uh, civil engineering department, the University of Texas at Arlington. Let us welcome Dr. Mohammad Najafi and Dr. Vinayak Kaushal for the keynote address. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm very honored to be a keynote speaker together with Dr. Kaushal for this uh, evening presentation. And uh, as you said, the topic is environmental impact of pipeline rehabilitation uh, using CIPP. So just to introduce the topic, um, uh, I would like to mention that the pipelines for sewer, gas, oil, water, 
and uh, culverts for the drainage structures in the highways are getting old and deteriorated. And there, needs, <clears throat> there are a lot of needs for methods to renew and rehabilitate these pipes without digging a trench and excavation of the roadways and the streets, which has a lot of social and environmental impacts. So uh, CIPP, which is curing place pipe, is one of the most common methods of trenchless technology to renew the old pipes uh, without um, or with minimum, I can say, uh, environmental and social impacts. So in today's lecture, uh, Dr. Kajal will uh, present some of the aspects of the CIPP installations. And I will be available for um, adding to the content and also uh, answering any questions that may come up. So Dr. Kajal, would you like to start Are you muted or? I think he's here, right? Yes, 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 he's here. He says he's there. Can you hear us? Um, I think I can add a little bit more. I was expecting him to show you the PowerPoint presentation. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, the Curimbrace pipe is using a type of felt or fabric, or recently they use fiberglass material. And then they um, uh, saturate that material with the resin, which might be the polyester, epoxy, or vinyl ester resin, dependent on the application. Like most the uh, water pipes, they use epoxy, which is approved for you know potable water. And most sanitary sewer and storm sewer pipes they use polyester resin, which is less expensive and uh, is appropriate for those uh, gravity follow installations. Uh, also for industrial applications, they can use vinyl ester, which is more suitable for very corrosive environment, which might be available in the industrial applications such as power plants or chemical plants and refineries. So using the access point, like for sanitary sewer, we have the, um, you know, these access points, which are called manholes. Uh, usually they use those access points and insert the fabric or felt uh, saturated with resin inside the pipe and they can go as much as like 1,000 or even you know at certain cases maybe 3,000 feet um, in one shot and then uh, they have an interim manhole and then an exit or terminal manhole so they pull the fabric inside and then using the air pressure or water pressure, uh, they can inflate the fabric to the size of the pipe. And then after the inflation, they start curing the resin by hot water, by warming up the water to about 160, 200 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and keep it hot for at least maybe four or five hours 
depending on the size, to cure the uh, resin. And then after curing, there would be a process of cooling down. So I know there may be four, three hours of cooling down, and then they do a CCTV inspection to make sure the quality installation has been met. Um, obviously, the pipe needs to be clean and televised before installation of the CIPP. So all the laterals are located, and uh, also any issues with the old pipe are identified before CIPP installation. Dr. Venayak, are you there? I think Ide is not hearing us, or he's on mute. Uh, he has chosen a companion mode. Uh, I think uh, maybe that is the reason he's not able to join, because nothing is being shown. That his name is uh, in the uh, participants list, but nothing else is being. Uh, can he just uh, log out and join again? Let me send him a text. Uh, OK, I'm calling him. Okay, he's joining again. So, okay, sure. thank you, Dr. Thank you. So, um, I wanted to just emphasize the CIPP uh, will have a lot of benefits because other way you have to dig the pavement and the street and the highway in order to do this uh, rehabilitation of old pi uh, pipelines. So there are competing methods to CIPP. One is a slip lining, and the other one might be the spray applied pipelining. Slip lining is when you install a new pipe inside the old pipe, but it has some disadvantages because you reduce the diameter of the old pipe, and that may impact your hydraulic capacity. The spray applied pipelining is a very good method in certain cases, where you can apply a polymeric material sprayed inside the old pipe, and that can have um, a structural benefits as well as hydraulic benefits for the oil pipe. Uh, so uh, Dr. Kajar is here now, and I will give it to him to continue. Dr. Kajar, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Okay. So hi, everyone, and uh, good morning from Texas, and good evening in India. So I'm sorry I was having trouble. I was in the companion mode or something. So. I was waiting for everyone to join there, but yeah. So sorry about that. 
so i can go ahead and uh, share the screen so please let me know if you can see my screen yes sir the screen is yes received. yes okay thank you uh so i go ahead and uh, get started uh, sir can you make it in the slide uh, slide show mode sir so that it will be more visible yes it is in the slide show mode uh, but here it is not uh, seen like that the whole screen is seen ah yeah it has come it has come okay. yes sir thank you all right so uh, good morning everyone um, uh, i am uh, Dr. Vinay Kaushal and I am Assistant Professor of Instruction, Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Texas at Arlington. Uh, along with me, uh, I have my colleague and my mentor, uh, Dr. Najafi. Um, so we together are going to present on the topic uh, environmental impact assessment of trenchless uh, cured in place pipe, which is CIPP renewal method for sanitary sewer applications. And uh, we would like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to uh, present and then be here today. So the presentation outline, it goes like um, we talk about the method and some of its benefits and uh, some of these implications and a uh, little bit of background objectives and what is the need for this type of research, a little bit of uh, literature review, and then uh, uh, the methodology, the results and findings, um, conclusions and recommendations for future research. So if you see uh, this underground infrastructure was installed in 1950s and 1960s in the US and Canada. And then uh, there are 800,000 miles of public sewers and 500,000 miles of private lateral sewers um, here. So that connects the private property to the public sewer lines and then lot of uh, uh, capital investment and then uh, for the uh, next 25 years which is required um, for the repair of this conveyance system also if you see the conventional method of uh, digging in and placing the pipe which is called as open cut or the open trench method it has got some disadvantages or challenges or risks or some safety issues associated as you can see here so and then sometimes um, aesthetically speaking and also there are social costs there are environmental concerns so that's why we get to the this trenchless uh, concept and then in this presentation we will be emphasizing on the CIPP, which is cured in place pipe um, renewal technique. And uh, so generally speaking, we have trenchless technologies to install or renew the pipelines, such as oil and gas, and uh, also some of the distribution and uh, sewer collection systems, also water pipes and uh, so we usually use these methods when the other conventional methods, as I showed you here, like open cut is not uh, applicable. So what are the advantages as compared to the conventional methods? So we have the lower cost uh, per foot of the installed pipe. There are lower environmental impacts and also lower social costs. But with this, there are also some disadvantages involved, such as there is the reduction in the flow capacity 
in the renewal trenchless technology methods and higher level of engineering skills are required. So the CIPP method, it was, it came from the UK to the US around 1970s as an alternate to the digging up and replacing sewers. And then this method involves a liquid thermoset resin saturated material that is inserted to the existing pipe by hydrostatic or air inversion or by mechanically pulling in and plating. So it goes by manhole to manhole. You have inlet manhole, you have um, the termination manhole. So the liner material goes in from the inlet and then usually the equipment and the uh, you know the other things which are used for the putting in of the liner and those things they are taken out from the termination manhole and there's a cctv continuous uh, for the continuous operation that basically tells you what's going on inside and for the inspection and so forth so and then the liner material usually is uh, cured in place using the three types of uh, methods such as or techniques like hot water, steam, or light cured using the ultraviolet light, UV light. So end of the day, you get the CIPP product, as you can see in blue. So obviously, the brown, which is the outer pipe, was the deteriorated pipe, and it needed renewal. So we applied the CIPP technology, and then it resulted into the CIPP product or pipe within pipe, right? And then uh, for the resins, which are to be used for curing, we use polyester, epoxy, or vinyl ester. Polyester resin is more common, commonly used. So like this, you have uh, the liner, which is present in the truck right there. And then obviously it is manufactured and designed using the needs and knowing the needs of the uh, conditions and also the diameter and uh, uh, the length and so forth. So uh, that way, uh, this is uh, specific to the, the to the job site and the uh, you know like the the manhole um, parameters, right? And then um, also I talk about the environmental cost, which is basically is not that straightforward, but also is need of the R because everybody today talks about sustainability, which is kind of um, the combination of environmental, social, and economic factors. This diagram which you see is called as triple bottom line or the three pillars of sustainability and then there are certain indicators that are involved such as lca which is life cycle assessment and also iso standards 14040 and sometimes also 14044 and also other indicators that is sa 8000 and also for the cost analysis, we have MFA. So together we can take uh, basically sustainability into consideration and then we can comment on that. So the idea is that for any of the um, processes or the, you know, when we are taking into consideration like sustainability or the uh, environmental impacts so we put in the energy and material inputs into the system which is like the software which we are using usually there are so many softwares now available in the market but in this research we used uh, SEMA Pro which is a widely trusted and known um, software 
approved by the EPA, uh, US EPA. So usually we take the raw materials, which of course the material used for manufacturing of pipe, the pipe itself, and uh, other things which are associated in the manufacturing. Then the material processing. So we are trying to input all these materials into as much as accurate possible so that we can get accurate emissions and waste um, analysis done at the end. So also related to the product manufacturing, material processing, and then its usage till the end of its life, which is called as disposal. Since every pipe or the pipe material or anything to do with the underground infrastructure or um, like the installation or renewal has got certain design life like um, CIPP usually is like 50 years. So we are seeing it for the end of this life. It doesn't mean that it's on only going to stay for 50 years, but it's just that for the theoretical or input uh, purposes might be less or more. And uh, then based on how accurate we have the inputs, we get the emissions and waste in the form of, I will show you in the example in the later stages and how we analyze it. So this, when these emissions are multiplied to the unit cost, we get the environmental cost assessment. So as I said, we use the ISO standards and also uh, certain initiatives which are by the EPA like 14040 for the principles and framework and 14044 for the requirements and guidelines for evaluating the environmental cost uh, for the given process. So why do we do that? Because usually uh, we need to uh, identify the opportunities to improve the performance of the product so that it can last for maybe more years or then we use you know when the product is tentatively going to end so that we can plan for an alternate or so forth and then also we need uh, from the industry standpoint or the decision makers standpoint that they got to know that what is in there and then they need to plan for uh, taking the decisions for the cities or municipalities or uh, you know, those places wherein the pipes are laid and there is underground infrastructure involved. And also selection of relevant indicators of environmental performance. So the objectives are to conduct the environmental impact assessment of the trenchless CIPP renewal method. The application involved here is the wastewater, the sanitary sewers. And we are also trying to identify the factors that influence the environmental cost most for the trenchless CIPP method. So when we saw the literature, we, as you can see here, right from early 2000, going all the way until quite recent, um, all the emphasis has been on the construction cost or the installation cost. However, there was minimal for like environmental cost or it wasn't even talked about, right? Because maybe the processes were not clear or they did not have adequate information or the method to evaluate it. So that's why it was, uh, uh, quite a thought that, well, something like this should be uh, analyzed or emphasized on. So that was one of the another reasons to go for this kind of research. And now the data, uh, where should the data be coming from? So uh, efforts were made to get uh, some kind of data wherein both open cut and CIPP are parallelly used so that we can emphasize on the 
you know, like same parameters or similar parameters to compare. So which was kind of ideal case. So uh, the data for the analysis came from the city of South Pasadena, California, which is a city in uh, Los Angeles County. So it's composed of several wastewater basins from new, numerous sewer pipes. And then it is, a, as I said, is a combination of open cut and uh, CIPP. Uh, and then there were certain other um, parameters or information about that uh, basin, which was like the soil type or um, the CIPP pressure or the resin use. So all these factors were put in while the analysis of the um, the materials and methods so that we can get the emissions. And then uh, the emphasis was because of the data uh, mainly on the small diameter, but the similar methodology can be applied to the medium and large diameter pipes also. So these were some of the like the manhole IDs or the pipe IDs, which uh, was um, basically from the Google map and uh, those things you can see in yellow, we have open cut replacement and in um, orange, we have CIPP renewal from manhole to manhole. And then other sources were also used to kind of add to to make it more uh, like the data to be more and more comprehensive, like other dissertations and uh, thesis. So as I said, the analysis, the environmental analysis, uh, cost analysis, how it was used. So um, we used SEMA Pro software that takes the um you know like the inputs and it has got its own um databases to kind of match with ours and then based on that it can tell the emissions so it was a very detailed and comprehensive process took a long time so environmental cost we define the goal and scope we do the inventory analysis impact assessment and the interpretation of results that took again long time so as i said the materials and assemblies in the form of amount or to be consistent whatever units the system asks for we have to be consistent with the units like here we changed everything in pounds so that we can do a good comparison and then it adds up to a similar uh, quantity. And then based on the literature, different equations or you know the calculations were used to uh, come up with this amount for different materials and processes which were used like for the manufacturing of CIPP and uh, with that type of raising and curing method. Also, the equipment which were used for CIPP and open cut, both those were analyzed to come up with the emissions, how many operating hours per day, how many construction days, how many of them were used, what is the horsepower, and so forth. And then uh, the processes were found out out of this. Uh, factors and again uh, to bring it to the same number or consistent units and uh, these were after the software was run you can see the CIPP and open cut um, you know bars or the GANTs you can see here so this is the percentage of the impacts and then on the horizontal axis you see the impact categories so the environmental impact assessment results of the CIPP renewal. So as I said, we got the emissions in this form, right? And then we had uh, the processes as, for example, for which process 
the intact categories were maximum or minimum, right? You can see, for example, the ozone depletion was highest for like the use of generator or maybe like here you can see the use of van and so forth is minimum for like ecotoxicity and so forth so it's very clear and uh, then the unit costs were converted or the unit emissions how much was the emission was multiplied with the unit cost for them and again it was very hard to find find out these unit costs so from different sources and these were brought to the current numbers or the uh, that year number to multiply it to get the total cost and then divided by the linear foot of the installation to get the unit cost of the total CIPP environmental cost for the linear uh, feet. And then um, obviously divided by the inch diameter so that we get the CIPP and open cut for the dollar cost per linear feet per inch diameter. So here we saw uh, the processes and also as how we ended up making you know like the decisions for the cipp and open cut and similar methodology could be used for other um, diameter and even i would say for other industries also like um, which are dealing with the uh, you know like the environmental footprints or the carbon footprints to make a call for whether that type of product should be used or not similar to you know like when we when we are uh, booking a flight in the airline usually they give us a comparison that well this uh, type of uh, airline or this type of flight would have lesser carbon footprint as compared to the other one and not even for uh, airlines there are several other um industries or places wherein every day there is a environmental impact analysis done so in conclusions um, i would like to say that the evaluation of environmental cost uh, is very essential element while we are uh, looking forward to the sustainable development of under underground infrastructure and it's very important that we use um, the analysis and uh, of the environmental cost per unit length as the function of diameter because the owners, utility owners, the decision makers and the municipality should know about the alternate uh, method. Also, um, the CIPP renewal caused less global warming smog acidification carcinogenic non-carcinogenic respiratory effects and also the fossil fuel depletion was less so uh, the type of liner felt and resin material influenced the environmental cost of the project the most for cipp so these are some of the vital uh, factors or the influential factors that would uh, drive towards the environmental cost most like the type of liner felt the resin material and uh, for the cipp the cost of fuel for deturing because there is not much or no deturing as in case for the open cut the cost of detour delay and pavement restoration because it's minimal or no um was uh, negligible for the cipp method so as you can see the influence factors for environmental cost of cipp type of liner and the type of resin material had most as compared to the felt or the hours of equipment usage or the transportation because everything is on site so there is not much so for the recommendations for future research we could extend it to different diameters we can have more and more data to make it more comprehensive 
we can use uh, soil and site conditions or even we can use different site conditions to make it condition based uh, prediction model which can be applicable to wide um, basically variety of places or you know like countries and so forth using the similar uh, methodology and also uh, effect of different pipe sizes types like here we talked about uh, the gravity we can also extend it to water pipelines or gas for the pressure and also materials such as the resin felt etc for cipp to vary it basically uh, based on different conditions and make it condition based more comprehensive and also use different curing methods such as water steam uv uh, again to make it a uh, little bit more comprehensive so that was it uh, and then uh, we are here for questions uh, if you have any and um, so thank you again for this opportunity and then uh, please let us know if you have any questions here are our details uh, uh, thank you dr vinayak it was a very good presentation uh, just wanted to add that this topic of environmental aspects and the social aspects are getting more attention in the u.s i'm sure all over the world and uh, we are currently involved in one or two projects that we are measuring the um, fumes and uh, uh, monitoring the air pollution due to curing the resin at the project site. So the results of this research will be very helpful for government agencies and municipalities to schedule CIPP in the residential areas and uh, just to make sure that, you know, all the uh, public, um, you know, the residents and the businesses around the CIPP projects are aware if there is any impact on the air quality during the installation or before installation or after installation. So this is very important now to just give the confidence to the people that CIPP is safe. And if there are any emissions, what they are. So with that, uh, I think we conclude our presentation. Is that right? Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, if there are any queries, uh, you may please raise it. Uh, sir, uh, can I ask you one thing that... Uh, if you are providing the CIPP, uh, some materials uh, can you suggest? Uh, I mean, preferably what we uh, provide, is it dependable upon different locations and places? Will it differ? Or uh, the uh, materials uh, you have suggested in the slide, that is the only possible thing? Uh, no, no, no. Well, uh, my uh, approach was that depending on what material and location you are using the similar methodology could be applied and then based on those locations and materials and methods we have to look for the closest option in the software to match it and it will be a different emission anyways uh, based on that because we don't know how much that material or footprints are involved in the manufacturing of that material so it is all material based so uh, preferably what type of materials we will be suggesting for such uh, methods 
well the now that we have green materials we have uh, you know like biodegradable materials environmental friendly materials so obviously that would lead towards lesser footprints or no footprints uh, but it is being provided as an inner lining isn't it sir in the first figure which you have shown uh, in right. the pipe it will be provided inside the deteriorated pipe right right but if yes. it is uh, biodegradable then will it not be uh, again deteriorated by the effect uh, of the sewage water since this is uh, like it doesn't last forever i mean it has got some design life right like 50 years and so obviously we are looking for at least for that time unless there is a there are there is a poor design or other things involved wherein it does not last for the set time but otherwise typically speaking that it it will and it should last for that time and then after that anyways the owners or the decision makers know that there is a time for its uh, you know further replacement or renewal or you know so so if it is have to be replaced after 50 years then the cost of renewal will it be um, economic or economical or uh, will it cost uh, more than what is being expected if it has to be replaced uh, at regular intervals of time uh, so dr najafi would you please comment on this uh, yes, uh, cost is kind of project specific. So depending on the location, whether it is developed area or is it uh, in the you know outside of the city and uh, undeveloped area, it makes a big difference. Uh, if it is in the developed areas, uh, obviously the social cost. Uh, which includes traffic and traffic disruptions and, you know, noise and dust and a lot of other things that are associated with the open car project, you know, is going to be considerably high. You know, if you dig a trench, uh, you have to show the, you know, the trench for safety. And then you have to excavate, you have to, uh, you know, take the spoils, you know, all the cuttings out to some other locations. And then sometimes you have to bring new material, new soil to embed or backfill the trench. And then you have to repair the pavement. And so a lot of costs are associated with the social aspects of the open cut uh, excavation, which is not uh, during the CIPP. So CIPP basically uses the available access points, which are manholes along the pipeline, and uh, no excavation usually required. If it is in a remote area, you may have to have some access roads for the trucks to come in. Uh, beside that, um, only issues might be this uh, air quality that we are researching at this point to see what type of impacts for what's on the air quality uh, near the job site. Okay, uh, sir, uh, if, if that material question that is, will we have to do some test uh, already that uh, the water in coming in contact with the material which we are going to use in C CIPP? Will we be, uh, should we do some laboratory test and then uh, take up that result and then only suggest the material to be used inside? Uh, the epoxy, epoxy resin is already approved for potable water. So no testing is required. Usually the water pipes are using epoxy. Okay. So no need for water quality. However, they need to check the installation quality because the curing process is very complex. And now they use sensors and fiber optics to measure the temperatures and duration of the curing. So the process is kind of more advanced as far as the installation and curing of the resin. 
However, for the water quality, uh, if they use epoxy, it would be okay. For sanitary sewer and storm sewer, uh, usually you don't need to check the quality of the water. Okay. So that any that epoxy material can be used for that uh, sanitary water also? Yeah, it's more expensive. The epoxy, they don't use it for sanitary because it costs more money. Mm -hmm. And then if you are using epoxy, it needs to be certified by NSF, which is, uh, so, I mean, it is an organization in the US for certification of the materials. So not every epoxy is acceptable. The companies who are offering epoxy resin, they need to get approval for water application. Okay. So we have some questions in the chat box. Uh, can you see this or should I read it for you? Yeah, if you read it. Yeah. Uh, it's a question from Jawahar Sao. Um, the ozone depletion levels of CIPP are shown as higher. How can you justify the usage of CIPP? Yes, I think yeah. I can answer this. Uh, so uh, basically, it, it depends uh, like how much of the CIPP or, you know, like how much is the open cut we are using per unit length or per unit diameter. So it is not just, um, you know, simply we see for if CIPP is higher or CIP uh, open cut is lower or for that impact category. But it is just that uh, basically uh, how much percentage of that impact is important. So maybe for that part where, when it is higher, maybe it is very little higher. But for other categories, for example, the global warming or acidification or eutrophication or those category it might be even higher for even higher for the for the open cut as compared to the cipp so i think that if that makes sense yeah uh uh another question is being asked is the eia conducted uh, environmental impact assessment being conducted? So, yes, I mean, it is as per the EIA. So, preferably, you will be having some methods which is being followed uh, for taking the assessment? Yes, so as I said, uh, it is like the, in the presentation, if you, if you remember, we had uh, uh, the method which was used was Tracy 2.1. So Tracy 2.1 is basically uh, the method used. And there are like this, there are other methods also, which is EPA certified. And, uh, you know, so you have to basically be careful about. And then, and also based on the literature, you know that which methods. But yes, it is... Uh, it all leads towards the environmental impact assessment. Uh, sir, uh, in this uh, pipe, when we are providing the inner lining, will that inflow capacity, that is the carrying capacity of the pipe, will it be affected? Because it yes. has, yeah, it how, will, it will be, be ready. A little bit reduced. So I talked about that in the trenchless technologies, uh, advantages and disadvantages. It will a little bit. It will because it will be pipe in pipe, so it will be reduced. Compared to the, to the old pipe, the CIPP make it very smooth. So if you analyze the like the Manning's coefficient for the CIPP and for the old pipe, in fact, it will improve the flow capacity. So because a lot is on the surface of the pipe you know, the friction factor, the Manning's coefficient. So CIPP actually increases the follow-up. Okay. Oh, uh, so the smoothness will increase the uh, flow of the uh, water. 
Yeah, yeah, it does. It does because it's very smooth inside. And then uh, I was going to add the EIA uh, usually is performed for the big projects. Uh, the CIPP projects are considered to be smaller projects <laughs> for um, you know municipalities or uh, maybe Department of Transportation and the highways. So I don't think a formal EIA is conducted is conducted for CIPP projects, especially if the uh, owner of the project is a government agency and they have their own processes for evaluation of the methods and acceptance of the method and the contractor and the vendor. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there any more questions uh, to be clarified? Yeah, actually, I have to go to another meeting, so I would like to uh, say goodbye and thank you for all of you who attended the meeting. And uh, it was a great pleasure and the honor to present this evening. Yeah, so, uh, sir, one minute, sir. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Jyotika uh, for giving an official vote of thanks. Good evening. It's my inner esteem and privilege to deliver a word of gratitude on this moment. First of all, let me thank God Almighty for making this a very effective session. We are extremely grateful to the chief guest of the session, Dr. Mohammad Najafi and Dr. Vinaya Kaushal from the Department of Civil Engineering, the University of Texas at Arlington, Texas, USA, for sparing the valuable time and it was a great opportunity to hear your thoughts on environmental impact assessment of trenchless cured in place pipe renewal method for sanitary sewer applications. And this shall definitely encourage us all in our future endeavors. Your thoughts have enlightened our minds and shown us a new path. A modest way of thank you to Dr. Gigi Anthony, head of department civil engineering, who has been a constant source of inspiration, rousing our spirits high. With utmost love, I thank our faculty and students for their endless efforts for making this a great success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you.